What to you does the apparent move toward protectionism in the United States represent? It's not only a U.S. phenomenon. Unfortunately, we see certain swing toward protectionism everywhere in the world, which is driven by the fact uh, that um, there is certain dissatisfaction of uh, global uh, globalism and uh, uh, global trade. It's not, how to say, it's a clear fact, not my invention. Uh, and um, I believe, uh, number one, we should not forget the uh, huge contribution which global trade made in the a development of the world past 15 years, especially if you talk about the pouring out of poverty, hundreds of millions of people. Plus, I believe if we will forget it and move to the more protectionism, we will pay for it. What are you most concerned about? Which country concerns you the most? Well, I can't distinguish any specific countries. We see more protectionism in developed world than in developing world, and probably... Uh, well, to say then between the United States and Europe. Not, not, not necessarily, but developed world demonstrates more adherence, but uh, I believe that uh, I'm afraid we see some kind of reciprocity and more and more countries are engaged in it. Everybody swears that it should be no protectionism, but we see growing number so of... Uh, is that what you expect, that we'll see a domino tumble hope, of tariffs? Well, I don't know. So far we observe this trend, but I hope that it will be enough uh, wisdom and common sense among politicians and policymakers to stop it. At least I believe that uh, open dialogue about it could be helpful, because if everybody does it, probably makes sense to discuss and at least impose certain rules on this, just to make it more transparent and rule-based. For example, we have anti-dumping and anti-dumping anti -dumping measures and uh, anti-dumping procedures, which are supposed to be uh, the measures against unfair trade. But we see more and more examples when anti-dumping is used as a protectionism measure, just through the technicalities and play with the data gathering, assessments, and so on. We should have more open and transparent system preventing growth of protectionism. President Trump has said he'll consider major action, his words, if his administration decides that steel and aluminum imports threaten national security. If he were to undertake major action, whatever that means, how would it affect the global market? Definitely, it will be a substantial distortion. The U.S. was a classical destination of uh, many goods, including steel and aluminium. United States needs steel import because of uh, supply-demand balance, but any substantial uh, distortions, any uh, substantial uh, deterioration from free trade will uh, bring a lot of distortions, and eventually we all will pay for it. He has also said, I'm speaking of President Trump, of course, that he wants the U.S. government and American companies to buy American when it comes to steel. Now, Severstal is no longer a U.S. steel producer, but given your experience there, will a Buy American policy really help U.S. steel suppliers? Well, difficult to say. Maybe short term it could make some impact, but on the long run, A, it will definitely undermine the free trade, a level playing field of competition which will be reflected in less motivation in improvement of the efficiency of American steelmakers. And at the end, it will trigger some reciprocal trade actions, and it will lead to the, uh, how say, barriers for efficiency improvements and growth of competitiveness in the world. U.S. has experienced something similar in cities during the Great Depression, and uh, widely spread conviction is that uh, more protectionism at that time, which was uh, driven by short-term uh, way of thinking, which is understandable, but nevertheless, uh, led to substantial deterioration of economic situation in the U.S. and in the world at that time. We should avoid this mistake. You have suggested in the past, if I'm not mistaken, that the oversupply situation in the steel market can only be addressed at the state level. In other words, countries have to decide to cut production. Do you still feel that way, or is there another way to address this situation? Well, I don't know if there's a remedy, for sure. My point was that we should uh, openly discuss it and get engaged, uh, should, should involve all interested parties, and to avoid uh, some antitrust suspicious, we should engage governments and international organizations like OECD in this discussion to have open dialogue, because the current situation uh, in steel industry is very low capacity utilization, which fluctuates around 70 percent, sometimes even below 70, is very, very risky for the uh, health of industry long term, which could be detrimental for the world. world needs steel. And, uh, but it's very difficult to have a healthy, sustainable steel industry in, in, in such an environment. Of course, everybody uh, survives. 
and Silverstall as well. But I think that at least to discuss overcapacity issue could be helpful to avoid un, uh, how to say, uh, unfair trade at least and some kind of uh, uh, subsidies, uh, some, some, some influences, some, uh, uh, some, some elements which really disturb and contribute in further deterioration of supply-demand balance situation in steel industry globally. Probably it 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 helpful, but so far not too many people believe so, and as a result we don't have open dialogue. There is one gleam of hope. Uh, the previous G20 meeting mentioned that steel's uh, uh, balance, steel uh, capacity utilization with the capacity utilization in steel is worrying and should be addressed on the global level. I hope it could be the foundation to start from.